working on this computer. All right, that's started. And you're good. Well, hello everyone and, and thank you to everyone who's tuning in and thank you to Charlie Behrens for taking time out of his very busy schedule uh, to support local journalism, which I know is a cause that's very important to him. Um, and before we get started, I just want to say I know that um, all of you in order to participate in this to be here tonight, you had to become a Cap Times member. So we really appreciate that. It's crucial to you know, our operation going forward. And if you have fun tonight and you like what we're doing here and you like what we do at the Cap Times, please tell your friends to become members too because we're gonna be doing more cool stuff like this. And we've got another Zoom event coming up on December 29th. Our food editor, Lindsay Christians, will be interviewing chef Courtney Burns. Um, there is going to be a cooking demo of some sort. You're gonna learn how to make something and they're gonna talk about how food is comforting and, and um, how it relates to people and it's, just, it's gonna be great. So. Um, Watch for that, watch your email to register for that. Um, so I've interviewed a lot of people, Charlie. I've interviewed politicians that some people might be impressed by, but I don't think my friends have ever been impressed by anyone oh. that I've interviewed as much as you. So thanks for making me look kind of cool. Wow, that was very kind of you to say, or your friends to say, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so you studied journalism at UW-Madison. Yeah. Uh, what drew you to that? What's that? What what what, what drew you to that? Yeah. Oh, what drew me to that? Uh, so I actually, uh, no, I don't want to get on here and start flexing, but I was the editor in chief of the uh, high school newspaper. So wow. we put out a record low six issues that year. So, you know, I got that going uh, for me. But I, I, I was, I've been, I guess my first four, my brother was the editor in chief before me. So that there was like some nepotism going on. So that, that's sort of where I like learned how to write and do that. And then when I got to UW, um, I, I, you know, went down the journalism route. It was the thing I knew how to do. And I also, you know, I just enjoy, um, I think just the power of journalism and that, that aspect always drew it to me. Like, uh, some stories just don't get told if it's not for people who, you know, shine a spotlight on it and tell those stories. That, that is really what drives, you know, the world, what issues we uh, focus on and care about and therefore then work their way up to policy change or whatever. And so I think it's, it's the power of it and the ability for it to really make change that, you know, I enjoy doing. Also has terrible at business. And uh, so I couldn't- It's, it's funny, people who do, do journalism tend to be terrible at business. I think that's how we and got I, into this terrible place we're <laughs> in now. I love when you're in Madison, you're walking like down, um, oh man, uh, all the streets are blending in. Park Street, is it Park? I don't know, but you're walking down and you got Vilas on one side and then the, the business school on the other. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's like- uh, you know, this bomb shelter from the 60s and then this beautiful, like, uh, glass building. And now it's got another building. There's so many buildings in Mass. I was walking down the street there uh, before the pandemic, and I turned the corner on, like, uh, one of the streets, like, going towards State Street. And I, I did not recognize it at all. I, I had a moment, and this happens sometimes when, when I go on tour, where, like, I could be walking down a street and I don't... I uh, know what city I'm in. Uh, this, this is not going to sound good on this podcast. People are now now have more questions than answers. Anyway, that happened Sounds to me. Like in Chicago's big city. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. But that happened to me in Madison because I was like, oh, what, it, what am I looking at? Because I was so used to thinking I was going to see uh, something and there was a huge yeah. building there now. I was like, oh my gosh. No, it's happening all over the place. Like I've only lived here, I don't know, six, seven years. And like, I go to the street that my first apartment here was on and I don't recognize mm -hmm. it. So it's not just you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should also mention, which I forgot to at the top of this, that we are taking questions from the audience. So if you have one, please drop it into the Q and A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, hopefully you can find that. Um, and uh, we'll be kind of funneling those in throughout the night. And I should also mention, I don't know how many, much of this I'm actually gonna get to, but I've got a, a keeper moving it, cracked it, open here tonight. Now you, uh, you mentioned something actually while we were doing the, the thing to make sure my internet was working and you said something about keeper moving beer. You said it tastes like, what was that again? 
I said it tastes like, a, it reminded me of a Schlitz. And folks, there's no better gosh darn compliment that I could possibly have for the Keeper Move and Light Lager than for it to taste like an iconic, uh, honestly, I'm gonna say American beer, the Schlitz, okay? You know, and thank you, thank you for, Jesse, I'll, I'll pay you. I know we're not supposed to, you know, tell everybody. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's frowned upon, but right. okay. yeah, I'll, I'll take, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it offline. Okay, okay. Yeah. Bye. So, <laughs> bye. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you you found out when you were studying journalism the thing that I found out like the first time I had a few too many beers around friends who weren't from here, which is oh yeah, you've got a Wisconsin accent. Well, you start getting a little too excited, and you, you get the o's and the nose and uh, you you got some advice to drop it, but you obviously not <laughs> gone down that path. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, uh, to, to really do it, like, I've had to direct a few people on how to do it. And, um, you know, it, it's honestly, it's really, if you just start only talking with the bottom jaw, and you barely move the top jaw, that's just how it, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did, I just said, yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, I, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I did get some advice to to drop it, yeah, to set, or I would not get a job in broadcasting. So I ended up doing that. I, I got a voice coach and then, um, yeah, I learned how to, I don't know, I guess get rid of a lot of the stuff in the accent, but there were just dead giveaways, you know? I mean, I was in um, uh, Dallas or whatever doing the deal and my opinion, you know, the O, hard O. Yeah. <laughs> I told everyone to to find a bubbler on a hot day, you know, which oh, is, no. you know, they're like, Charlie, that's what you use to smoke the devil's lettuce. It's not a, not a water fountain. I was like, well, water fountain, you know, that's where you go to get changed for the meter. But I mean, so those things just kind of kept happening. And then I, I just developed a character that sort of embraced everything that everybody, uh, you know, had said was wrong about my journalism. And there was a lot, there was a lot wrong in my <laughs> broadcasting voice. So. But you did some some pretty cool journalism, like while you were doing that. I mean, you covered politics. You got arrested covering politics. Um, yeah, yeah. What happened? What, what was that career path like for you? Well, that was actually in college. So I, in okay. college, um, I was working for MTV, their choose or lose thing. And this was right in the early days of citizen journalism. Um, and my assignment that evening was to cover the protests. And um, uh, they, they had protests going on. That was my deal. And they were like, cover it till it ends. So I was staying and staying and staying. And then, you know, now we see it on the news quite often. But, you know, the cops uh, form a wall. Obviously, they say it's a, a cease or a, what do they call it? Where they say everybody go home, basically. Or oh, yeah. Something. Disperse or, I don't know. And dis yep. or disperse yeah. or something like that. I forget the name, yeah. but you know, and then they throw the, uh, the tear gas and then the, uh, the, the, the firecrackers, um, or whatever. So, uh, anyway, long story short, at some point I was like, okay, I, I, I gotta go. And I was with this reporter from the Boston globe and we turned around and, uh, and he was a great guy who I don't remember his name, but he was taking me under his wing. Cause it was clear. I didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, and I was like, so what do we do now? Because there was just a line of police officers. Uh, and he was like, well, I, I'm pretty sure we get arrested now. So um, uh, we, they, they were no longer believing credentials at this point because, you know, uh, Photoshop just had come out and uh, everybody was making fake credentials back then. And this was St. Paul. I don't know if I said that. There was St. Paul during the yeah. Republican National Convention in 2008. And... Um, yeah, so then uh, I, I got arrested and then I spent the night in jail, uh, which was, you know, I was like a holding pen, you know, like a bunch of tall, whatever. And it, it, I, I got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, which was nice. And I gave half of mine to a taxi driver who uh, ended up uh, then returning the, this is the most Midwest oh. thing now that I think about it. I give him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He gives me a ride back to dinky town in his taxi no fare no charge so and by no fare i mean very fair i got it very fair yeah. no fair to him but you know i mean he did get a half a peanut butter jelly sandwich and i was hungry but he was a big not a terrible man 
and he, he, he asked for it. So, you know, I gave it to him. It's, you know, the, the actual Midwestern kindness, the Midwestern nice that we hear about, which I don't know. I, actually, I want to ask you about this. So when you live in the Midwest, you hear every state kind of claim like Iowa nice, Minnesota nice, Wisconsin nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I have my thoughts on this, but I'm curious what, what your thoughts are on what that means and which state actually claims it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say Wisconsin is the nicest uh, state for obvious reasons, but I think everyone claims Minnesota has the most, like, that's the most Minnesota nice, I think is the biggest trope or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think that each state can say they have their own thing. I'm going to go with Wisconsin, but, you know, it's all the same vibe. It's, uh, you, you know, like, oh, you can't go away hungry, you know. Uh, we got extra, we got extra uh, raw meat for your cannibal sandwiches in the, in the fridge, you know, which apparently you're not supposed to eat. False. Apparently not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was going to ask you this later, but you brought it up. Are you a yay or a nay on the cannibal sandwich? Oh, I've had a cannibal sandwich or two in my day, you know. Have you? Yeah, a, a vegan cannibal sandwich, actually. But um, so, yeah, no, I'm kidding. That that actually that joke <laughs> makes no sense. Uh, no, I've had I've had them before, um, but I I don't eat them often. I wouldn't say it's not like my go-to. Okay. Um, so it's it's like raw onions and other stuff on it that you. Yeah. So it's so I'll let the other Charlie explain because he does it better. So folks, here's what's going to happen. You got your rye bread. It's the extra rye bread you got left over from uh, the fish fry and whatnot. Okay. You don't know what to do with it. Great. You got extra uh, beef, you know, sitting in the refridge and it's going to go bad. All right. And you don't want it to go bad. Okay. So you, you, you know, and you don't want to take time to cook it because honest to Pete, roll the dice a little bit. Okay. It's around Christmas. Okay. And you're just trying to make the most out of what you got going. So you pull out the bread and then you do a thin layer, just a thin layer of, of, of thicker layer, if I'm being honest, but you put a layer of meat in. Okay. Onions on top. Uh, you know, a little something else. If you want pickle, if you want to be adventurous, a little mustard, why not fold it up or just keep it flat put it down the trap and and then you got it. This is what's really important. You got to start saying your prayers then. Okay. Cause there's a good chance it's going to wreak havoc on everything going on in the intestinal region. So you just say a prayer tree and you should be okay. But uh, you know, if you get sick, you'll know you did something bad. Okay. So there you go. Well, I feel like if someone had some of the cranberry sauce that you've made, or if they drank one of the Tom and Jerry's that you've made, that brandy, the the massive amount of brandy that you put into those might, you know, do something to, to sanitize. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. Brandy is the uh, the age old healer uh, of Wisconsinites. Any if anything that ails you, if you put a little brandy in the deal, you're going to be feeling just chipper afterwards. Promise. It kills all diseases. Uh, you know, it's an elixir. It is. So if I can ask the other other Charlie, how did the Manitowoc, Manitowoc Minute persona, how did that Charlie persona come to be? Um, uh, yeah, so I was doing stand up in, uh, and I was, at the time I was in Los Angeles and I was working as a, like a red carpet reporter, you know, which is, yeah. anytime there's a red carpet, nobody wants to be there. The, the journalists don't want to be there. <laughs> the celebrities or whatever you want to call them don't want to be there. They're just promoting whatever they need to promote. And uh, we're just asking questions that nobody wants to answer that they've heard a million times. And uh, I was not a good, I was not a good entertainment reporter. We were like a new brand. It was some affiliate of variety. It was called Ad Hollywood. And uh, so we were always at the end of the line. So everyone would just skip past us. So I don't know. There were a few too many nights of doing that. And then I was like doing a few other jobs uh, uh, and I was like, I just got to, and they were journalism adjacent or actual um, journalism in some cases, but I was like, I just got to uh, uh, change it up. And I always had wanted to do comedy, uh, but I did it once and bombed and then didn't go back for a while uh, as a lot of comedians will say on their first time. But anyway, I developed this persona of this, um, this uh, news character or it wasn't actually it wasn't news at the time oh i was talking about my time in news and then impersonating like 
myself doing news, you know, like my first yeah. news reads or whatever with the full on character thing. And, you know, so then I did a video uh, with the full on news show that took off. Uh, I was very fortunate that it took off because I had put out a lot of other sketches that did not take off. And so then I just doubled down on it. I kept doing them and doing them and doing them. And uh, that was where the Man Talk Minute came from. And then, you know, I kind of pivoted it uh, to doing a, other sketches and, and a bunch of other stuff. And and we still do the Man Talk Minute, those, those classic episodes. We don't do them as often. Um, it more mostly because of a bandwidth thing, and I, I think that if we do them every now and again, people you know see it, you know, in, enjoy it a little bit more. So, yeah, I think I think the first thing that I saw from you, which I think was pre Manitowoc Minute, but I'm not sure, was the um, if if Jack Dawson in the Titanic actually spoke like he was from Wisconsin. Yeah. Was that pre? Was that before Manitowoc Minute? Yeah, it was about six months before it, and that was that was actually also from a stand-up bit uh, as well. And but I could never get the stand-up bit to work, and so I was like, uh, "Well, oh well, if I just underdub what Jack Dawson's actually saying, then you know." And it's fun because he says Wisconsin in it, and you know he's from Chippewa Falls, so mm -hmm. it was that was a pretty easy one to uh, do. So that was fun. I thought that was, I mean, I liked it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I first kind of focusing on the Manitowoc Minute, I, I want to hear how you develop those um, segments, but also just can you tell people a little bit about how, what your creative process is, how you develop material, how you test it out, how you know what's working? Mm, yeah, a lot of trial and error, um, mostly. I mean, it depends if it's, if it's a um, video, then, you know, you kind of know your audience, you know, sorry, that was a burp. I couldn't tell if you knew. I tried to hide it, but then I just got it. So now we're in, now I'm in trouble. Now we all know. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, so if, if it's, you kind of have a general sense of what people was going to resonate with your audience. If you've done this a while, you know, and a lot of Midwest stuff and, um, that you know you kind of just run through all the stuff and a lot of the midwest stuff that bucket of material is all based off of recognition so it's like if and especially the way social media works if you have a headline you know the videos are like a square and there's a headline if you kind of know immediately if that headline is going to grab somebody because a lot of times that will determine whether they watch the video or not and um and if it does then you know it's really hammering sort of these things that we know so you have that basis of understanding and then just flipping it on its head and those ones like midwest nice for instance everybody recognizes midwest nice so then it's a simple game of of it's a listing game so um that's that's kind of a it's just a montage i guess is that that's that type of video um, but it, the best videos for online are uh, things that everybody is already aware of is a thing. And then you just exploit it and make fun of it, kind of turn it on its head. Uh, with stand-up, it's a lot different. It's uh, you get up on stage. If, you're, if you've been doing stand-up a while, you have the material that you know works. And that's your first 20 minutes of material you know works. And then your last 20 minutes material you know works. That middle 20 minutes, I've bombed so hard on that. But you you kind of are good because you know if if it's you can just throw it out and get to the stuff that works. But that's the most fun for me is that middle area um, because it makes me feel like I'm doing open mics again. And uh, it's kind of a rush to think that your stuff is going to completely bomb, even with a warm audience, you know. Um, but that's if I'm on tour. Uh, testing material with an audience that knows me, they give me a lot more uh, leeway. But if I'm in um, like New York or Chicago or LA or something, or I'm bouncing on somebody else's show, or I'm at the comedy store, uh, for instance, and I have a 10 minute slot, that's an audience that doesn't know who I am at all. So it's a whole other kind of set that you have to know that stuff kills. And trying stuff in that environment is is a little bit more nerve-wracking i that was kind of a long meandering answer but no, it was a great answer it 
in some way reminds me of the way that I like to do some interviews when I have to ask like harder unpleasant questions. Like I like to start with the stuff that's going to like kind of butter someone up and then go into like, okay, now we're going to ask the stuff that like neither of us want to talk about. And then, you know, got to finish it up with some, you know, easier questions so that I don't leave a bad taste in your mouth or whatever. So let's see here. It's 6.20. So in like 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, we're moving into it. <laughs> 10 minutes. Can I expect the hard questions? Is that the deal? No, I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to get pretty, pretty brutal here, I think. Yeah, I know. It's the hard <laughs> ones. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess you, you talked a little bit about the online versus stand-up difference, but right now you can't really do a whole lot of stand-up. Um, how has the pandemic, do you think, sh changed the way that people do comedy? And were you maybe a little bit ahead of the game because you were already kind of in that online video space? I think in some ways, a lot of comedians I know didn't um, quite diversify, I guess, their, their revenue streams or their ability to, not revenue streams, it sounds like a business school thing, but I mean, it's true. <laughs> They didn't diversify the way they could connect with their audience as much. They were just stand-up comedians. And then when this thing hit, it was very hard, you know, and they, they're they funnier than I am. I mean, they're they're really funny guys, but it, and, and women and, uh, and, but it's, it's some, it's hard to establish uh, the following and the following I got, I was very lucky to get it. And I feel very grateful for it because it, I tried for a long time and did not have it. And I've seen some of the funniest material I've seen uh, is from people and it's getting, you know, hundreds of views, but it's so funny. And, you know, you share it or whatever, and it can get a little bit going, but um, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to break through on the social media stuff. It's especially hard if you're, if you, if you're not used to making videos every week too, because you have to be consistent. You have to like, uh, sort of cater to the algorithms and the different algorithms on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, and they all want consistency primarily. And if you're not in the habit of uh, editing, if you can't edit, and if you can't write and shoot and do all that stuff quickly, you know, you're set back a lot. But I think the quarantine time I guess there were a lot of people hungry for content hungry for distraction and so if you were set up to feed that <laughs> distraction you know you know to to fiddle while the Titanic sank uh, then you you did well I guess so I did I did I think I did um, I'm not I, I think I did all right in that I served that for people who were you know just trying to laugh a little bit and uh, um, I don't, I mean, people did it better than me too, um, but it was, it, it's a in, wild, interesting time, but it's been, it's been fun to create content in this wild, interesting time too. I bet. Uh, I'm going to pepper in some audience questions here. And, and one is, uh, someone wants to know what's in your mug and I want to know what your mug says. Oh, it's... Ah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> This is a uh, shout out to Sunset Hill Stoneware. Um, they're, these are made in Wisconsin. They're made actually in Nina. I wanted to make sure I got the name actually 100% uh, right, but no, we made these for a little bit. We stopped um, making them, I think. I, I don't know why. We should make them again, because I really like them. But um, what's in it? Uh, uh, maybe some, it's a hot toddy. It's so a hot toddy. Tea, <laughs> and then there's, something there's an elixir for my throat in there you, uh, you know it's i've heard brandy is very important you know for, for health so yeah it's a lot of water though so uh, you see me like drink it's not all all booze but it's uh, <laughs> yeah there's it's it's good for you <laughs> yeah uh another another question actually two questions combined because two people have asked about um, some of the partnerships that you've had so um, the You Betcha guys and uh, the As Goes Wisconsin stuff um, in terms of uh, some of the, the voter sort of PSAs that you've done. How do, how do they, these partnerships come to be and um, how much does that sort of matter for all of you in terms of um, the way that you're able to do your jobs? Yeah, I think they're, they're always very fun when you can collaborate with somebody else who's sort of in your space and gets it, you know, and, you know, you're all um you can all help each other and brainstorm or whatever i think the collaborations are great and they're fun and it puts you in a different 
box. And also it helps you share an audience, you know, it helps you like get exposure to their audience, they get exposure to your audience. And then, you know, it's, it's really, and I'll say this, there's, there's sometimes in like stand up comedy, not all the time, but there are certain like clicks and it's a little bit like, you know, you kind of get, have to work the door at the comedy store in order to get stage time in this and there's like a almost like a hierarchy. That's not so much the case when it comes to on, online, I guess, creators, if you want to call it. There's a lot of like uh, creative energy and people see the mutual benefit in collaborating. And uh, Miles, for instance, you betcha guy, he and I could have easily seen each other as competitors. And I guarantee you there are videos that I put out that he's like, I can get more views than that, you know? And, and cause I, I look at his views. I'm like, how did he get that many views on that? <laughs> and so you get into those, those kinds of fun, petty comparison things, but it's all in good, uh, good heart. I mean, I don't really care at the end of the day, but I'll call him and, and bug him, um, or annoy him if, uh, he put something out that was real good and you know uh he'll do the same to me so it's it's fun then Kristen is uh very um talented and and she's an actress i i believe before doing that but she she's done an amazing thing of kind of coming back to wisconsin creating really good solid content uh in a difficult space and it's, yeah, she did an amazing job over the election, just informing people on, you know, what certain things mean. And she kind of got into the, the nitty gritty of uh, some of the political stuff and how things work. And I think did an amazing job conveying that to her audience. I mean, she, I know that her goal, I've, I've talked to her a lot, is, is to be nonpartisan and just try to, you know, present as much helpful information as she can. Mm -hmm. And and you, I mean, you, you talk about news, you talk about it and, and have some commentary on it, but you've done something that I think a lot of people can't do in Wisconsin, which is appeal to people in both political parties, people who don't subscribe to a political ideology. How much do you think about that? How much of an effort do you make uh, to, to do that? Yeah, a lot. I think about it a lot because I it, that's uh, honestly... That's a big reason that I wanted to do the Manitowoc Man because I, it, well, I not the first episode, the first episode I was like, okay, but then once it took off, I was like, well, I think there's an opportunity here because at that time it was 2017, um, sort of the state that I had grown up with, there was a lot of things sort of coming out, um, just nastiness and uh, family members not talking to each other and all that. And it was just like, come on, is this, do we need to do that? Like, there's no, like, there's no way we're ever going to move forward if people can't talk. So I, what I hoped to do, and I still try and do this, is create a bridge of comedy and call out absurdity. And there's plenty of absurdity out there. And I think we can all be honest about the absurdity that's out there and say that this is crazy. And so, you know, and so there are a lot of issues that seem political, but they've been made to seem political for the purposes of people gaining political power. And, you know, by that I'm talking about, like, it's not uh, political to say s support the troops. It's not political to say Black Lives Matter. It's not political to say this is the only environment we have, we have to protect it. These are all basic things and nobody on the face of it is gonna argue it. Now, you, you, in each of those, we have politicians who have made it their job because they see that when you divide, you can, separate and you can rise to power and that's a very simple political formula that's been used you know for centuries and i just wanted to um maybe put content out there that would sort of combat that i mean i don't really care if you have if you're on the right or if you're on the left if you um are respectful I mean, that's that's what this whole deal is about is about people having differing opinions and we listen to you, it doesn't make you a bad person, um, but we're all, you know, malleable and growing and if, but we can't grow if we can't listen to each other. So anyway, that was kind of a, a long lingering, uh, uh, you know, that was a long response, but I think, did it answer your question or not? I think the I whiskey so. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah. 
So uh, you, I, I can't believe that I, I am talking to someone who has had a number one hit album on the Billboard Bluegrass charts, uh, yeah. but I am. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was really cool. I was super, super, I mean, since I, since I was a kid, I always wanted to uh, like, uh, uh, I, you know, be like Bob Dylan or whatever. That was my hero kind of growing up, you know, not that I'm saying I'm like him, don't, don't take this the wrong way. But uh, so the, to, I always incorporated music in my shows. And so then to actually put together an album, I've always written songs, you know, but I've always also kind of not been great at singing at bad rhythm, you know, so to kind of force myself on stage to play songs that made me a little bit better. I got a vocal coach. Her name's Dot Tobman. Uh, she's actually just on my podcast this week. She's awesome. And um, so to do that and get to a place where like, oh, I can be presentable. There's a lot of auto tune on the album. Okay. I screwed up a lot of notes. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. But uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, I kidding? There's definitely. I thought it of... sounded a little bit like T Pain, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. We tried to get that uh, yeah. Wisconsin thing in there. So. <laughs> um, so before I ask you to do something crazy, which is I'm gonna ask you to see if you'll play one of the songs. How did uh, how did you put this together? You you did this with uh, Adam Grohl from Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, Wisconsin band. You've got Wisconsin musicians on it. A, it's, it's a it's a fully Wisconsin album, but how did it come together? So Adam and I um, had been talking. I think we met. I was doing a show in Minneapolis, and he was at Pachyderm recording. Uh, that's the studio. Uh, I think Nirvana re recorded an album there actually. And but I went there and hung out with them, and we just messed around. We've been friends since. I was doing a show in Nashville, I think, and he was down there, and we recorded one song, the old Wisconsin Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And we just went to the studio and just, you know, recorded it after writing it quickly. And that one did, you know, it did okay. And, uh, and then Adam went on tour with me, did a, he opened a couple shows and then I think it was in Green Lake. We started uh, coming up with the idea for naming your town. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, the next, you know, morning we were staying in this weird motel and I, I went over to his room and we recorded a version of uh, Lafleur, and uh, you know and then we just kept writing when the pandemic kind of hit and then you know we pushed ourselves to record it so well it's a fun one um, okay. do you have a song you'd like to maybe play for us yeah okay take a little more of that elixir I know that's why I've been doing it so if this sounds pitchy <clears throat> it's because I don't have auto-tune it's live okay so this is called Up North and uh, got rid of the H because, you know, in, in the Midwest, actually, um, when you say up north, you, I feel bad for the letter H because, you know, it gets knocked out of a lot of words like duh instead of the and dad instead of this, you know, can get you into trouble, you know. But anyway, that's a different story. I'll, I'll put this on. And if I screw it up, which I'm going to, I apologize in advance in typical Midwest fashion and I will send you a room bar. <laughs> well, I'm going up north cause life's too short for this Midwest American dream. I'm telling you that selling you my whole damn life. Well, it ain't everything it seems. So I call up my wife, says we're leaving tonight. Grab the food, kids, poles and all. Cause I'm going up north, this life's too short And don't forget the alcohol Well, I'm going up north That's the pitchy part Yeah, I'm going up north Well, you can't watch the news without the booze When crazy be leading the way and there ain't no love coming from that mouth It's just fifty shades of hate Well, I'm done with your dogs Wait for your whistle Cause I know a better way Going up north with the folks I love And you can bet your best I'm leaving today Well, I'm going up north Yeah, I'm going up north. Well, I got 
got this farm with corn and cows, but the cows can't milk themselves. So I gotta call Jenny from up the road with some hemp, oh, please don't tell. Says, honey, I got you, hit the road, catch some fish right off of the pier. Oh, and bring me back a bag of perch, but please watch out for deer. Well, I'm going up north, yeah, I'm going up north, said I'm going up north, yeah, I'm going up north. So there you go. You know, that up north, it's a little pitchy, okay, but I'm working on it. You know, more whiskey would make it a little less pitchy, I think. You get it. You get it. No, whiskey always helps. I have an important question. Do you have a line that signifies up north to you or the north woods? Where does this, where does this cutoff happen? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. I would say north of Wausau, but you can get into trouble because it, it, it kind of like, you know, it, mm -hmm. it does this thing because I would consider other, you know, if, if you go all the way over east, like Okano, up north, you know, mm -hmm. if you ask me, but if you ask a guy from Marshfield, you know, that's, it's a dip, there's, there's a whole, it's a whole thing, you know, I, I guess up north is relative. The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I mean, I grew up in Marinette, which is, I mean, across the river from the UP. And yet I have had people tell me that that's not up north. Like it still has to be higher than that. And I just, no, I mean, I, yeah. I won't. <laughs> I think Highway 8 is what some would say, yeah, and then, yeah. uh, you know, but when I go up north, I go up to um, Lando Lakes, so that's right on the border of the UP. UP is Lake, definitely yeah. up north. We can start, yeah. we can start, we can definitely say that, there, but yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of like, um, like Milwaukee, how like, like Wauwatosa yeah. kind of digs in, and like you could be uh, west, and yet, you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's 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 a state of mind, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so uh, listening to the album, I guess I, I thought that I had probably heard all of the Hallelujah covers that I ever needed to hear in my life. Um, so I was a little skeptical going in, seeing that there was going to be one on there. But mm -hmm. uh, setting Ufta to Hallelujah. I loved it. I mean, it's funny, but also I loved it because it reminded me of my grandpa who, you know, would say that all the time. And I know your grandparents are also pretty big fixtures in what you do. So how much of what you do is, is shaped by your family, whether it's your grandparents, whether it's growing up with 12 kids under one roof, um, <laughs> how does that shape what you do? Uh, very much so. In fact, uh, most of my character is based off of, you know, my grandpa and stuff he would say. And, um, and yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, when you grow up and, and you grow up kind of in a goofy uh, set of situations, when you're one of 12, you get yourself into a lot of kind of goofy situations. And it, it's kind of just fun absorbing like and by that I mean you're in a big family setting and everybody kind of brings in stuff and uh and then you have big extended family I have like 70 cousins I think and then uh uh so you you know you have these like potlucks or, or family get-togethers and part of the family's from this part of the state and that part and so you just hear all these weird nuances you absorb a lot of it and then you know that typically won't prepare you much for anything uh, um, aside for, you know, like when you regurgitate it in the man 12 minute, it prepares you pretty good for that, you know, but I grew up, you know, kind of talking the way my family talked and saying things the way they said. So um, that's honestly, it, it's, I'm, I'm lucky that that was the case because it's, it's a cool culture um, and one I enjoy very much. So, I know that we are drawing closer to the end of the time that we have, so I'm going to try to get in a lot of, um, well, a few more audience questions and, and a lot of the really Wisconsin focused questions that I have for you, because I think that's kind of why we're all here. Um, but 
one of the questions that we've gotten, which I can't believe I didn't think to ask is, where, where does keep or move and come from? Is that something that you heard? Did you come up with it on your own? What is it? You know, all, so it is from the first episode and all of the phrases are things that I had heard at one point or another, like, well, except for go Packers and, you know, yeah, yeah. For, for that go Packers phrase, I wanted like Edward R. Murrow has good night and good luck. <laughs> I want my version as go Packers F the bears. Yeah. Um, you know, and know, and a keeper move in. Uh, I had a buddy who said, keep it moving. And it, it, he's from Indiana. She's named Scott Evans. Uh, he's on, um, he, he and I were roommates for a while. He's on Access Hollywood now, actually. Oh, but wow. I, he, he would always tell me to keep it moving. And then, um, and I had heard people say it here before. Um, uh, I watch a lot of fishing shows too, and Larry Smith says it, you know, and uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I, I can't remember where it actually originated from, but like not, none of the phrases are, and I guess that's the whole thing with the Man Talk Minute is it's all a reflection of what already exists. So I didn't, you know, create um, you know, cheese Louise, or I didn't, you know, these are all just phrases that you, I didn't create Ufta, I didn't create Ope, you know, it's just stuff that's out there. And so I just try and bring it in and celebrate it, I guess. So. Do you think that'll always be part of what you do as, as an entertainer, as a performer? Um, I guess, do, do you worry about this being kind of the thing that is you for the rest of your life, the way that actors get worried about being typecast or are you, okay if that's what happens i don't really care i mean i think yeah if you're gonna get typecast it's more you know i mean you probably either you didn't i i think if i if you work and do it and try you cannot be typecast but worst case scenario i'm okay with it you know i've already thought about that and i mean it's given it's given me more opportunity than i ever really dreamed of and so i I don't care at all, you know, and, um, and I just enjoy uh, the Midwest so much and Wisconsin and, and the people that, you know, if, if that's what I'm known for, that's, that's great, you know. So the, the opportunity that it's given you, I mean, you could easily take that run with it, just be kind of concerned about yourself, but you, in almost everything that you do, talk about um, charitable organizations, particularly you uh, donate a lot of the proceeds of your merchandise to the VFW and, and other organizations, the Boys and Girls Clubs, I know you, you support them. Um, I, I don't know how to ask this without just like flattering you, but I mean, why, why, why did you decide to, to do that, to, to kind of give back while you're also just kind of making a name for yourself? Yeah, you know, glad she asked. And honestly, it's, it's the fear of purgatory, okay? When you grow up Catholic, you know that you can go to heaven, Okay, I've already written that off the list. You can go to hell. That's a possibility. What I'm shooting for is that middle ground that's purgatory. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, it's cocktail hour before you go to heaven, okay? So, you, if you, and how, how it works is either you can buy indulgences, okay? So, you know, you can buy your way there, uh, or you can do good deeds, or grandma can say a bunch of rosaries for you, and that'll get you to heaven quicker. But I figure if I can just land in purgatory, uh, then someone somewhere is going to say enough rosaries for me to, you know, take the elevator upstairs. And uh, so that's, that's really the primary motivation. It's self-motivated, if I'm going to be honest with you. So, you know, I respect that. Yeah. Uh, okay. When you're not drinking a keep her moving here, <laughs> what's, which tastes Fun like a schlitz. Yeah. Let's remind everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's your standby? Oh, uh, whatever's in the fridge, uh, mostly. Uh, no, I, I drink whatever. I don't have taste buds, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a uh, consumer uh, uh, for the product of what, you know, of the feeling afterwards. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, what I'm saying is if I drink coffee, I'm not so concerned about what the coffee does. I'm interested in the coffee situation. 
you know, and honest to Pete, don't matter what beer I'm going to drink. If I get a little beer buzz going after, you know, a couple, two treatment, it did its job. I'm not going to sit here and say, is that an IPA? Is that a bush light? All the bush lights do suck. They taste like water. Uh, but you know what? Everyone's got to drink water. And so I says, you know, however it goes, it goes. But I will say this, even though I can't taste nothing, Keeper Moving is the best tasting Schlitz in Wisconsin. Okay, so. I'll well, second, second that. Best. There's Schlitz and then there's. Right. So, yeah. Right up there. Mm -hmm. How do you take your old fashions? Mm, thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, I take them uh, sour. Okay, I, I like a jolly good uh, floater in there. Okay, uh, sour power. That's the way it's always been since I was a kid, you know, and. You don't forget that Florida or, or that floater, Florida. Thanks, whiskey. Uh, you don't forget that floater, or else you know you might get you know smacked upside the head with the good book. Okay, so you got to think about that. Okay, so anywho, uh, any any people sensitive about that just dropped off the chat. I only three it looks like. So there you go. Thank goodness. Yeah. Direct anything to to uh, Grandpa Bob if you're upset about that. So yeah, that's where I learned that. That's fair. Um, some, someone in the, in the chat has asked us, what is the way to make a gimlet in Wisconsin? Do you have mm. opinions on this? Gimlet. So I, I actually used to be a bartender at the Kohl Center. And oh. uh, yeah, so not to sit over here and flex, but uh, I learned how to make a gimlet there. And uh, what I remember is you can do a gimlet. So what is that? That's vodka. <laughs> That's how you know I shouldn't be answering this question. So what is that? Is that uh, vodka? Yeah. No, you can do a vodka gimlet. Uh, you can do a gin gimlet too, right? It's like so. lemon and booze and then who cares? Honestly, I was a bad bartender because I, again, no taste buds. I just go like that. And I, if you put extra booze in, no one's gonna care anyway, so. That's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're going out for fish fry, perch, walleye, or bluegill? Oh, go for them walleyes. Oh, jeez. But you know what? I, I To be honest with you, most of my fish fries are a bag of fish from the freezer, which is a combination of perch, walleye, bass, uh, sheep's head even. Yeah, we do eat them sheep's head. Um, you know, northern with the wide bones taken out, okay? Unless Andy was cleaning it and then he just tacks right through them and you choke when you eat them. Uh, yeah, so that it could be any of them. Uh, what do you put on your brats? Oh, glad you asked. I like to put, so mustard, I'm a big mustard guy. Okay, I, I got a whole collection of mustard, but then kraut and uh, relish. Honestly, I'm a works guy. Anything you gotta put in, I love jalapenos. You know, you put them on there. I want to be sweating by 2 p.m., you know? So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mustard, onion, and sauerkraut, but uh, ketchup on a brat? Yes, no. You know, some folks, I, it's not for me, but if there's ketchup out there and there ain't nothing else, I'll go with ketchup. You know, I'm, some, some people are purists, and gosh bless them, okay? But that's just not, not me. You know, I'm a, I'm a utilitarian. So whatever you got, I'll, I'll put down the gullet, sure. I'll do it at least once, you know? Uh, your your wife is also a funny person who creates content. Do you guys ever uh, do you compete it, over who's funnier, or is it all collaborative? No, it's all collaborative. She's very funny. Yeah, yeah. At, at Alex, where you should follow her, she has a lot of home renovation stuff. But no, she's she's really great. Yeah, she's got a lot of a good stuff. Got a lot of great ideas. Um, yeah, yeah. So no, we don't. We don't. No. It, it's uh it's very different stuff too i yeah there's not there's honestly there's not a whole lot of anybody i feel like i really uh you know am, am competing with that's the nice thing about the creative space too is that you know there's a abundance of ideas out there and you know it's just fun to collaborate with people you guys have a puppy oh yeah a little buck yeah he's, how's he uh, doing yeah he's good he's a uh He's a, a terrier uh, mixed with uh, an armadillo, actually. And uh, yeah, they breed down there in Texas. And uh, yeah, he was on the side of the road. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't rescue him. He rescued us, honestly. So there you go. That's what people say, I hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can see why, yeah. He sleeps So, of course, Vikings and Bears are playing. I'm at NFC Championship. Who do you root for? Vikings. 
biking right. is 100 percent committed and and i don't you know i've i've thought about that long and hard but i the bears would have to be playing lucifer and i would be on the side of the devil so yeah um do you have a favorite cheese mm, no well I like a lot of different cheeses, which is why I'm, it's not an apathetic no. I like right, a lot of different right. cheeses. I'm a big fan of obviously cheese curds. Now I know that's gonna sound cliche, but I really do enjoy the texture and the shape of, of cheese curds. And the um, Fresh or fried? Uh, fresh, but some people again will, you know, go against the fried situation. I'm all about that. I'll do that, you know, just make sure you got some, your tums ready to go you know um all-time favorite packer and best packer quarterback of all time mm. wow uh i i'm gonna go with the classics bart star and uh um all-time favorite packer ray nitschke i like the i like the ray nitschke story about uh the tower falling on him and he had a hole in his helmet and everything it, that's yeah. i don't know if it's true or not but it's a great story who cares if it's true doesn't matter. That's certainly not me. I'm, I'm only a journalist. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I've kept you too long, but I want to hear what else are you working uh, on right now? What's coming next for you? Uh, I'm working on uh, off the record. <laughs> you know, there are other people here, right? <laughs> I know. I know. We're working on um, some longer form stuff and uh, and it's uh it's fun and it has to do with a wisconsin city and i hope the project moves forward because i'm i'm very very excited about it. i can't really say too much i don't i never know what i can and can't say but you know i hope it i hope this project moves forward so well i'm sure we all hope so too probably be great um or if it's not do something else. Yeah, it's like you never <laughs> said it, you know? Yeah. yeah I'll just, just pretend it didn't happen. Happens, it failed miserably. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess I assume everyone who's on here probably knows where to find you, but I, I do want to give you a quick opportunity to, you know, plug anything that you, any, any places people can go to find your stuff and, and how they can support you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just at Charlie Barron's on any of the platforms. Uh, and then, uh, there's no H in Barron's, uh, but you know, I still respond to it if there is, it's silent. And then, um, at man's walk minute. So both of those. Great. Um, well, you know, I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone who's here uh, tonight again. Um, you're all Cap Times members, but I still feel compelled to direct you to membership.captimes.com and send that link to all your friends. Um, tell them you had a good time tonight. I don't know if I can say this, but tell your folks I said hi. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and watch out for deer. Can I butt in on this outro too? Can I just please, say, yeah. I want to tell them to watch out for deer. They are running around all willy nilly and with the roads slicker than snot, you know, they, they'll pop in and then boom, you got venison, but also a broken Corolla. So just use your noggin. Straight off. Yeah. Um, this has certainly been one of the best 53 minutes of my life. I hope it was for everyone else. Uh, can we, can we do a little go pack and, and F the bears yeah. to, to play us out here? Yeah. Yeah. Can I say the F word or no? I think say it. Yeah. Okay. Folks, I yeah, hope this was the best <laughs> yeah. uh, Cap Times interview of your life. As always, go Packers and fuck the Bears. Okay, I said, bears. Honestly, <laughs> I, talked to Tom, I talked to Father Tom about that, and he says it don't count as a swear word if it's immediately proceeded by the Bears, okay? It, not a swear word. Father Tom, if you got problems with it, you know, uh, I'll see it as confessional, okay? You're in the clear. You're at least going to purgatory. Yeah.